uh, treatment of venal lymphatic malformations, uh, you know, there are two major types. There are the tumors and there are the malformations. Uh, and I can tell you, I'm doing this a lot, and about 90% of the people who came to see me are wrongly diagnosed and have been wrongly uh, treated. Uh, and therefore, we recommend using the, is the classification, which is mentioned to um, see that whether they are tumors or malformations. Uh, tumors means there is mitosis, there's cell growth. And normally, uh, malformation means that the vessels are abnormally formed. There's no mitosis. And the most common tumor we see is hemangioma. Uh, well, the most common malformation we see is, is uh, venous malformation. And there's a special type which has been recently uh, described by our colleague uh, Ahmed al Amri. It's called uh, fav fibroadipose vascular anomaly. We'll talk about it in a minute. And it's... Uh, you know, vascular anomalies are common. I guarantee you, those people now sitting in the room, at least 10 of you will have some sort of pink stain on their, on their skin. It's not, it's not uncommon, it's just we see the most uh, difficult cases. Uh, most of the cases, you can just diagnose them clinically. Uh, what I want to mention is that sometimes the, you will have a problem in diagnosis. It's not always easy, and you might need a biopsy. Something useful is something called glute uh, which is glutamine 1 um, stain, which is positive in hemangiomas and negative in all malformations. Uh, this is a progressive disease. You know, uh, uh, malformations, the low flow, high flow, they are all present at birth. It's just a, uh, it's when they present. Sometimes they present early in life, sometimes late, but they continue to grow. And this is one of my previous patients. Uh, it's not just disfigurement. You know, this be, most of the people, they come and seek us uh, not for cosmosis. They seek us because of pain and sometimes bleeding. Uh, capillary malformation is usually dealt by a dermatologist. Sometimes it overgrows, like the pictures below, and it's usually treated by laser. Uh, the venous malformation, which is the mainstay of my talk, can affect anywhere from head to toe. Uh, and, you know, the most important clinical, clinical uh, appearance of that, it is soft. It is very soft. You hold it, it's compressible. Uh, and uh, if it's superficial, you'll see blue veins. And this is a very useful uh, test taught to me by, by one of the uh, surgeons, if, which is dependency. If it's in the face, you put your head down, it fills up. If it's in the foot, you put the foot up, and it disappears. Uh, I have in my clinic an ultrasound, which I cannot work without, and it's very easy. You see there are cystic uh, channels, uh, which has flow within it, and it's typically venous flow, and you press, as in here. It's very easily compressible, and it fills up with flow. Uh, with MRI, bright signal, extremely bright, and I recommend using a st uh, either T2 fat sat or stir, we can, you can augment the appearance of the um, lesion, and you often, not always, but you can see a draining vein. Uh, and um, you will often see with venous malformation, a flebilis, and uh, T1, it's almost similar to the muscle, and when it enhances, it will enhance a lot. Uh, these are flebilis, which can easily be seen on uh, X-ray. When you do enhancement, you know, a lot of people say that hemangioma in the liver, which everybody calls hemangioma, is not really hemangioma. It's a venous malformation. And if you remember the segmental infilling slowly. So it depends on the type of how big the lesion is. So sometimes it will enhance just uh, completely like this, and sometimes the enhancement will be segmental. Uh, and geographically, the lesion appears similar to MRI. Uh, this is the first type, which is sponge type, just like sponge. And you can see that the MRI and the venogram corresponds to each other. Uh, the other one is lake, just a pool of blood. Again, this corresponds to that. And the last type is just dilated veins. Similar, it's not varicose vein, but it looks very uh, similar. And this is a you know, picture during treatment. 
this is a not uncommon appearance is that if you do a uh, an angiogram, uh, you will see late filling. And this is not AVM. This is not AVM. And if you notice, you know, the artery is not big. With AVM, usually you'll have a, a hypertrophied artery, not always, but usually. And, uh, you know, if you do a, uh, an angiogram of this uh, abnormality, uh, you shouldn't, but I'm saying this was done by mistake. Uh, you will see this late filling, and this is not the way to treat them. You do not embolize with coils. You do not embolize with uh, particles. You do direct puncture. And I'm going to tell you the way I do it. My setup is I uh, uh, put a, a needle. I use, uh, I use ultrasound guidance. This is for contrast, and this is my sclerosing agent. Uh, I used to, but I don't use tonic anymore. Uh, there are a variety of uh, liquid agents that I use. Uh, I, 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 I like to use two agents. I usually use the above two uh, because one works instantly, which is either polydecanol or STS. It works within two seconds of uh, touching the vessel. And the second one, bleomycin, takes about a couple of weeks to work. And they supplement each other. This is my first case patient I did about 14 years ago. And I used to think, yeah, it's just stick, stick inject. And it turned out to be more complex with time. Uh, and, uh, you know, technique is very important to reduce your complication rate. Uh, two things I can tell you which have dramatically reduced my complication rate. One is I dropped the use of alcohol in venous malformation. I use them in AVM, but in venous, I dropped the use of alcohol. And the second is use ultrasound. Uh, try and say, do a single vein wall puncture to reduce the extravasation. Uh, and I do most of the injection using a roadmap or sometimes under ultrasound uh, guidance. Uh, you must have, when you inject, you must have blood return. If you don't have blood return, most likely you are extravasating, not always, but most likely you're extravasating. And if you do an injection and you see extravasation, please do not inject because that's when, when you get complications. Um, there are techniques for improving your result because what you want, you want to inject. You want to keep the drug that you inject within the malformation. You don't want it to get out. So if it does get out, there are techniques to, to divert the flow from the outflow vein into the lesion. And there are several techniques. One is just creating vasospasm, which means you do your venogram and you inject the foam. And what will happen, it just will create vasospasm. You wait a few minutes, and you re-inject again, and you notice, instead of filling all of this, most of the veins are in vasospasm, and you fill more of the lesion. Uh, this is the same thing in the neck. Uh, you have a draining vein, you inject, and you just wait five minutes, and then when you fill more, it will fill up the rest of the lesion. Uh, another example, big draining veins, uh, you inject, and then you wait, and then you inject the rest, you fill the rest of it. Uh, the other way of flow diversion, which means just to keep all the drug within the lesion, is to do two punctures. Uh, my colleague does more, give you pain, and it will reduce the contact between the uh, drug and the malformation. So you push the, uh, the, dr the drug, and that pushes the blood out, and five minutes later, I, I use a second agent, which is bleomycin, uh, and this is, you know, pre- and post-treatment. It's pretty good after two, uh, two sessions. This is another patient with flow diversion using double needle technique, and you can see with the first venogram, there's a lot of flow. Once you add in the second needle, the flow is diverted away from the, the, those veins to a low pressure into the other needle, and then you can use uh, your foam and bleomycin. Uh, some lesions can be very big, and lesions like that, you do not want just to inject the foam into the blood. It's not going to work. Uh, so what I do is, uh, uh, this is uh, S-mark stockings, so you f uh, empty, empty the lesion. I was trying to do here double needle technique, it didn't work. Um, it, it doesn't, you, it sometimes it doesn't work, especially with a sponge type. Uh, then uh, you empty the blood, you inject, and here you can see it's filling of a perineal vein. Obviously you do not want to, your, your foam to go to a normal vein. So then you add some glue, and the glue will obstruct the outgoing flow, and then you inject your sclerosing agent, and after a while you just remove that. Uh, glue and coils are, uh, you know, sometimes are very useful, because you want to keep the, uh, you know, you inject here, you can see it's filling very big veins, going eventually to a vertebral vein, you do another puncture, and you add in coils and supplement with 
glue, and after that you can add a new foam and bleomycin. Uh, another example of using um, uh, <coughs> redirection using glue injection of contrast shows you that there is a draining vein. You don't want to occlude a, a, a vertebral vein, so you fill, fill that with glue and then you supplement with the US closing agent. Um, some patient like this, especially when I have a, a big lake of blood, it's really difficult just to fill it with foam. So you need to use multiple techniques, uh, you know, a lesion like that. So first you put a sheath, uh, and I use laser fiber, uh, fiber uh, uh, just like when you do EVLT, you take the uh, fiber of the EVLT and you put it, and then you direct it in different places while you're compressing these two sides of the vein together. And when you, you do that and you change direction, you are burning the surfaces of the venous malformation uh, until you burn it, and then you supplement it with whatever you like, like, uh, with, like uh, foam. This is another patient with extensive large venous malformation. And you do, if you notice, this is the malformation. And there are a lot of draining veins. And a, uh, so you, you put your glue first. There's another puncture in massive veins. So here you are putting more glue. And if you notice, when we inject our foam and bleomycin, it's not draining to essential veins here. A patient has good response. Uh, I'm talk going to talk about the value of doing venograms, particularly in the lower limbs. Uh, when you have lesions that are really big or close to vital structure, it is very important that you do a venogram because you need to understand what the venous anatomy is like because you don't want to make a patient worse. A patient with extensive venous malformation, you can see the popliteal vein, then it is really involved by the malformation and then it goes out. You see, all of this is just venous malformation and you do not want to compromise the art flow. So this is an example of a, a second patient like that. Uh, a venogram shows you like anomalous uh, uh, involvement. So what you do, you do a puncture on the side, uh, you show a venogram, this is the uh, popliteal vein, uh, and then you add an, another puncture, you put a glue slowly and slowly until, this, you see this is the uh, uh, popliteal vein, which is this one, anomalous, and through a uh, direct puncture, you put a catheter to the top and you flush because you do not want anything to go into the normal vein. And after you supplement with the glue, you add in the foam, you add bleomycin, and therefore you fill this compartment. And while you're doing that, you are flushing the vein. It's very important to flush the vein. You don't get a um, flow of abnormal material into it. And then when you finish, you do your venogram, you make sure that you have not occluded an important vein. Same, con same concept in the iliac region. This is a very extensive venous malformation. You do a venogram, and you notice there's absent iliac vein in this region, and the flow out of the malformation is into, uh, from the left to the right. So you start working away from it until you, know, you make sure you're not occluding important veins. Uh, a very common thing that you see, and it, you, you see it more with big lesions, is coagulopathy, and it's primarily due to consumption of factors within the lesion. Uh, mainly you get to increase in the, because you are consuming factors, you're consuming fibrinogen, so it goes down, and your D-dimer becomes high. And uh, when it's very large, this can become um, more, we call it LIC, localized intravascular coagulation, and with with people undergoing surgery or going with sclerotherapy or major infections, this can progress and become DIC, where the fibrinogen is deranged even more, the D-dimer goes more, and to an extent, you know, the, the, even the platelet INR become affected. Uh, and you know, these patients do not respond to IV heparin. They will respond to low molecular heparin. They will respond to pressure garment because that will uh, reduce the amount of blood within the lesion, therefore will reduce the uh, amount uh, of blood available for coagulation. This is such a patient who I was treating for lymphatic malformation and uh, then suddenly he became worse. You look at the tongue, size of the tongue here and here, he developed LIC. Um, that's a tracheostomy in there and patients settled just with subcutaneous heparin. Uh, clinical results, uh, this is, uh, you know, pre and post happily married. Uh, this is also, you know, pre and post. Interesting that these patients can develop new lesions. Uh, this, uh, you know, this is a lesion that was not there and it's developed. Uh, this is pre and post. Uh, fibroadipose vascular anomaly is, looks 
in, in imaging very much like venous malformation, but it has an extra amount of veins, um, and it has fibrous tissue. And you know that because when you feel it, although it looks like um, vascular malformations, when you feel it, it's really hard. And this is a surgical image from Ahmed Al-Umari. Uh, you know, this is a normal muscle, and this is the one above it, which was resected. It's a conglomerate fibrous tissue with fat with veins. Uh, and when, when you look at MRI, it looks very similar. The few differences is that you, a lot of the times, see just too many veins on MRI, not ultrasound, on MRI, too many veins. You see, uh, you see fat, and it's better to show you the pictures. You know, one of the things you see is it's usually bright, but not, uh, not as bright as the veins, not always. T1, you'll see fat, and it enhances. And when you do ultrasound, you know, you can see a lot of it is just like, not like the normal venous malformation, although in MRI it does look like that. And you know, an area like this looks like a vein, but when you stick it, you hardly see any veins, maybe a little bit of veins there. Uh, so here you can see, as I said, you can see too many veins. It's very heterogeneous. Occasionally you see phleboliths, but not all the time. And this is a, such a patient, you know, there are too many veins. Uh, it's important to a venogram, as I said, we have extensive malformation and the combination of glue and polydecanol to treat this. Uh, another patient with FAVA, fibroidopause vascular anomaly, uh, treatment of one of the anomalous veins, which is this one. Uh, it's, it's joining the um, trunk over there, protect it with the glue, inject, uh, uh, sorry, protect it with a coil, put some go, uh, glue, and then supplement with a uh, foam, and make sure when you finish, you do a venogram, make sure you haven't destroyed patient's deep veins. One minute. Okay. Uh, Glue can uh, migrate, so you have to, you can snare it. Uh, complications include uh, uh, ulceration, they improve with time. Beware of compartment syndrome, especially in tight spaces, foot, hand, thigh. Uh, don't you, poly, bleomycin can cause staining, it can cause uh, bleomycin induced pneumonitis, either acute or chronic, do not over give too much. It will improve with time. Lymphatic malformation are usually firm, and they're just cysts that are firm. Uh, be aware of the microcystic cystic type, which uh, usually bleeds. The macrocystic is very easy. They are big cysts full of fluid, and uh, they can um, be micro and macro at the same time. Uh, like this one, it's in, it does not enhance because these are just uh, fluid-filled cysts. There may be dilated channels, which you inject with doxycycline mostly, I abandoned alcohol and bleomycin, and the cysts are simple. These are very easy to treat. If they are large, you empty them, and you just replace with almost equal volume of sclerosing agent. And if small, you don't need to put a catheter, just a needle is sufficient. And this, these are dilated channels injected with uh, doxycycline, and usually you get, uh, not always, but you, you, you get improvement. Uh, I use, uh, I, there's no time to show you the video, but uh, uh, I use uh, laser to um, stop bleeding, and that works pretty well, but the problem is you replace a bleeding scar, a, a bleeding with a scar, patients are happy with that. Uh, ideally, you can get a result like this, you change this into that, which is good. Um, I was gonna show you how to inject. You can get combination of venous and malformation. Quickly, I want to show you this is an important technique called gravity te technique for microcystic. You stick it in a, an ultrasound needle, uh, you put a tube, and create a crescent, and under a fluoroscopy, allow it to, to uh, go in, and you pull it back until you get flow. Uh, and you keep watching it with ultrasound, with, uh, uh, with um, uh, roadmap, and this is what you ideally would like to see. Uh, this is a patient with such a case. This is before, this is during treatment, and this is after treatment. I must tell you, this is very difficult to treat. Uh, you can get a mixture, this Klippel-Trenoni syndrome, which is a combination of capillary, limb hypertrophy, and anomalous lateral marginal vein. Uh, there's not enough time to talk uh, about it in detail. Uh, I think I have to stop. Thank you very much.